how do you see Pakistan's economy and the markets uh, going forward? Well, I think uh, Pakistan is extremely well placed geographically. It is in the, it is in Asia. It is in uh, the center point of Asia. There is great dynamism all around. I think one of the things anyone uh, who watches your show, who has children, more than one child, sometimes the parent can say things, but when the child sees the brother or the sister do something, then they change their behavior because they see uh, they're doing it in a better way. And I think one of the greatest things that ever happened, for example, to India was seeing what China was doing. Okay, they said, wait, wait, a, wait a minute, we've got to do this. One of the best things that happened to China is to watch Vietnam. China has seen S Singapore and Vietnam, which are much smaller countries, and they have actually copied some of, the, some of the things that these two smaller countries are doing. Pakistan is basically right in the midst of Indonesia, China, India, there's a, there's a wonderful confluence geographically. There's the demographics there. And there is, um, a, a, this is a natural weapon, is the English language is so widely spoken. And that is a, a, a global uh, passport in a way. And then you have, uh, a, I think, a very wonderful entrepreneurial spirit among the business sector. There is an agricultural sector, which is quite large. I think 66% of the GDP. But the remaining part, there is a wonderful globally oriented, uh, and, and I think with the internet, this makes, uh, this makes it very, very, to me, Pakistan, I'm told, has one of the highest penetrations of cell phones, mobile phones uh, in the world. And so this is, to me, the, the, one of the secrets is for the leadership and for the uh, economic authorities to say, how can we leap, leap above? So just as certain countries never built the landlines uh, to a great extent, they just went right to the mobile phone. The mobile phone, the internet, are going to be great em enablers and empowerers, I believe, uh, of the drive to uh, advance the economy and get the growth rate uh, to back to the rate that it's been in the last few years. But politics and the security situation is very <coughs> How do you see that affecting the economy? Well, I think uh, no, no country is without its, uh, um, its political and geopolitical uh, issues. No country. Uh, I think there's, uh, it's funny, it's almost like a, a, um, a television uh, is slightly out of focus or a camera is slightly out of focus. Small adjustments might uh, bring it into much sharper focus. Uh, to me, every country has issues of health care, uh, education, environment, energy, infrastructure, and immigration, whether they are sending immigrants or receiving immigrants. And so uh, there, there's, to me, one of, the, one of the things is we need to find jobs for the people who are coming up, uh, both uh, income-wise as well as age-wise. That, to me, is one of the great forces for stability is to try to expand and broaden out that middle class. This has happened in Brazil. Uh, there are certain other countries in, in Latin America where it has not happened, and you, have a, you still have a, a forces of instability. But one of the classical forces of stability is uh, to have a, uh, growing aspirations that can be met and satisfied and then people reach that level and they want to go to the next level. Okay, the middle class did come up in the last few years when our economy grew by an average of 7% per year. But uh, we have found out that in this recession or in this, uh, the, I'm talking about Pakistani economic situation now, that they are suffering again because the cost of living has really gone up. How can one protect this phenomenon? I think one of the greatest things that I've heard just since arriving in Karachi is to see the inflation rate coming down. When you get the inflation rate above 20% and above 30% uh, for the, the food and for fuel and for the basic needs of a household, that really begins to, to rip at the fabric. It happens in all societies, developing or developed. You can look back in the early 80s and late 70s, even in the United States, in England uh, in the 70s, when you get that inflation rate up, uh, when the inflation rate got up to uh, 40% in um, uh, Iran just before the Shah fell, they, people said, 
looking back on it, this was one of the things that's a great destabilizer. So you want to have that cost of living not rising at too high a rate. Uh, you have right now a very potentially destabilizing uh, rate of inflation in Venezuela. It's, a, it's estimated by Morgan Stanley to be 40 to 45 percent this year. Uh, but Pakistan, the, uh, the, the rate seems to be moving in the right direction. That's down. And also the interest rates seem to be moving in the right direction. Uh, for a 10 year uh, Pakistani government bonds moving from 17 down to 12. And I'm under the impression, and from where people I've talked to here, feel that it could actually go even lower.